gentlemen, welcome back to the 7th ISF World Championship here at the Nexon Arena in Seoul, South Korea. My name is Reed Rapid Melton. Of course, joining me once again, looking things set up there. Uh, talk about game number one. I didn't know what to expect, but it was certainly incredibly exciting. Justin, what do you think of uh, your first League of Legends cast here at the Nexon Arena. I mean, the, I don't know if it was because of the preseason changes or whatnot, but the game's way higher paced than I imagined. <laughs> we had actually like six kills coming in, um, or like nine yeah, it was total. Yeah, nine kills in nine, nine minutes. Nine so. minutes, so there's a lot of things going on at every single lane at the time. A lot of hard trades, especially in the bot lane. Mm. So very fast paced game, very fast. Well, if you thought game number one was fast-paced, get ready here for game number two. We're going to have Russia taking on the Philippines, if I'm not mistaken. And in case you guys haven't followed a lot of uh, Russian League of Legends or CIS League of Legends for a while, you're going to be pretty excited about this lineup. They are running some of the players you've probably actually heard of before from various different rosters. We've got the Russian top leaner Blorn. You guys remember him from playing on Mouse Sports. And then uh, we've also got uh, support, a little bit of support hype as Darker returns. This is a guy that you may have remembered as being uh, you know, the support for Gambit Gaming way back in the day. Uh, he's coming back in here along with uh, some other hype. We'll talk about the other players as we get into uh, the game. But yeah, a lot of, a lot of excitement here coming in for uh, two new regions or two more regions competing here at IESF. Um, I know you just talked about the Russian team. Do you know any of their core strengths in terms of... All right, well, let's go ahead. Before we talk about the strengths, we're going to go ahead and throw up the current match results from all the teams playing their group stage matches. Once again, this has been split into uh, four groups, four teams, all playing their preliminary group stage matches here today. So we should be able to show you the current match results for all of those games here in just a second. But you're talking about specific uh, Russian strengths. I'm going to be looking towards the top lane. I've uh, been a big fan of uh, you know, at least watching Blorn and his various challenger events. But here you can see the results there on your screen. So Serbia winning their first match over uh, Team Chinese Taipei. You can see the Laser Cats there as we just watched them pick up their, uh, first their one. immediate uh, game. As well as a win for the Swiss team. Looks like uh, the uh, rest of the results will have to wait a little bit more. Uh, we'll have to wait for a little bit more time for those to come in, uh, but that's going to do it for our results from uh, the early preliminary group stages. But that being said, we're going to throw things to. Uh, we're going to have a little bit more time as we get the the players set up here uh, for their uh, their next match. This is going to be the second game of six preliminary matches coming your way, so it's going to be pretty exciting to get these games started. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the 7th ISF World Championship. Here coming to you live from the Nexon Arena in Seoul, South Korea. My name is Reed Rapid Melton. Of course, joining me once again, Justin, how's it going? I'm doing fine, thank you. Well, hopefully it's going pretty well for everybody out there watching, and I do want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight to witness some of the best international esports competition. Well, this side of just about anything. I don't know any other tournament that has quite this many teams competing. I think we have upwards of 20 different countries represented here today, as well as over 200 esports participants from those member countries. Yeah, from all three games, and we just saw a match against... Iran and Thailand, mm -hmm. which is, I think, is pretty exciting that we'll ever get to see that matchup. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if these other matches are going to quite live up to that level of carnage. We had like nine kills in nine minutes to start things off, and it was just absolutely amazing uh, to watch. Maybe Iran mount a quick comeback, but then in the end, not quite over to uh, able to overtake their Thailand opponents. But coming up next, we've got another really, really interesting match. Uh, we've got uh, you can see the uh, the matches, uh, the matchups between players 
players here on your screen, and you might know a few of these players from Trinity World, the Russian representative. Born, former top leader from Maus, Irugat actually used to play on MTG with Alex Itch back in the day. Eka, uh, an ex mid laner for Rock's Kiss, the CIS team, uh, currently, I believe, on Hard Random Academy. Darker, you might have seen him as a support for uh, Gambit Gaming, and of course, Faceless, probably the uh, newest face to the team, even though I guess he is Faceless down there towards the bottom. And as far as Team Philippines goes, these guys actually have a lot of story behind them. Uh, they're kind of a hybrid between uh, an organization called Choisted Tyrants and, or uh, called Choi Gaming and then Toasted Tyrants. But uh, we'll talk about those as we get into our first game. We're about ready to get into picks and bans for game number two. It's actually our first game between these two teams. Second game of the tournament, Picks and Bands, coming your way. So we're gonna start things off with Russia representing the red side of this team on the right-hand side of your screen. And they'll be facing off against, like we talked about, the Filipino representatives on the left in the blue. Picks and Bands, what can we expect here, Justin? Um, like, I mean, I had a lot of was a fixed bands coming into this tournament in general, but what we saw in the last game, we realized that there might be off meta, different metas in different countries, so I don't know what might be coming here. I'm feeling that Morgana feels like a pretty strong band in terms of these, some of these teams, but Kindred are definitely a, a very a pick band oriented champion, very band worthy champion here. First tier jungle. Right. Now, it should be uh, noted that, uh, you know, Russia, the CIS region, has been represented in tournaments uh, even most recently as IWCA. So you've gotten a chance to see some of these, uh, some of the talent that this region produces. Now, it's going to be exciting to see them play here uh, with some players that maybe we haven't seen in a while. So if you're up with the CIS meta, probably going to see a few hallmarks of that here. Now, there's that Dr. Mundo ban you were talking about earlier, Justin. Yeah, the Mundo's a very strong pick, in this, especially in this patch right now. You can utilize them both top and jungle, a must ban. Um, and we got Tom Kench coming in on, again, another really high tier support. Yeah, we saw Tom Kench and Morgana both banned, so nice to see some support representatives. Now, in game number one, we saw a lot of top laners banned out there. Uh, saw a Fiora, we saw actually a Lulu wind up getting played up in the top lane. Just feels like you're digging pretty deep through that pool. We saw Ribbon ban, we've seen uh, a lot of aggressive bans up there towards the top, so what can we expect to see here? There's a Vladimir oh, yeah, There's ban. a Vlad okay. ban, okay, so this might be a, hit, a, a ban, a target ban towards some champ some player or something that they might want to run for their comp. Soraka, very, another very strong support. Yeah, with the changes to Grievous Wounds, they don't in affect incoming healing anymore, so just keep getting healed. Yeah. Anivia Over. first pick <laughs> coming in. Uh, now, Anivia might also be a pick away from Eka, but it's going to be interesting to see exactly what the champion pools these, uh, these players bring, because keep in mind, this is uh, only recently being, or this is being played on the only recently patched, uh, you know, 23rd iteration here in the preseason, so... And as I've mentioned before, Anivia is a very strong mid lane right. pick right now with the high lane clear and was a lot of damage that output that it can do, but I'm not sure if it's a pick that they want to take first with other champions that are, that are very strong, like Lulu still in the game, Gangplank, so Lissandra, all those picks are still available, so I don't know if they're gonna go with this Anivia. Yeah, Anivia, I mean, you got five seconds to change it, haven't seen anything else, and it looks like it's gonna be locked in, our okay. team Philippine. And for the second rotation for the Trinity World, we see at least a top tier jungler right now, and then Lulu again coming in, so the very, very good picks for coming in for Trinity World for their first rotation. Yeah, they knew exactly what they wanted, went ahead and locked it in, and for at least we actually got a chance to see that ban in the previous game. This time around, it definitely makes sense to see that on, uh, you know, as a, an instant pick. One of, if not the strongest strongest jungler, depending on what kind of strategy you're trying to go for. Of course, for. and with the Kendra bet, it's probably the top jungler that you want to play. Right. And then for the Philippines, they are left with either Lee Sin or Rek'Sai, some champions along like that. Um, I don't know if they're going to try to show any of their laners in this second rotation. Um, Zach, oh, again, I forgot to mention, Zack Jungle is also very strong. Okay, so talk about that, because, I mean, Zack Jungle, we started to see it maybe come back during Worlds. I remember uh, Hojin was a big fan of running that on the Koo Tigers. What's up with Zack Jungle, and why is he still so strong, even in the preseason? Zach, Zach Jungle, just because um, a lot of the junglers been getting nerfed recently, and the, with the passing and all that, with the lane clear speed, I took away a lot of potential for like assassin 
oriented junglers and stuff like that. But Zach here can does a lot of things in team fights, and also like Rexai has a lot of gank potential in different regions of the map. It's for example, could walk around behind top lane and try to gain a buff into it without crossing the river. Right. Stuff like that, so very high gain pressure too. Not a very pre-6 jungler, but once that all comes in, it's very strong in team fights. Now you talked about assassins being removed from the jungle, maybe less playtime there. We got an assassin Quinn being picked up here by the Philippines. What's going on with the Quinn pit? Um, Quinn did oh, get her with some sort of a rework, got like, a lot of buffs. Uh, her movement speed with the ult and whatnot, this has been a very deciding factor whether this champion is very strong or not. We see, I seen it coming out in mid get mid lane. I come, I seen it coming out in jungle. It could be the ADC. So we don't know what they're gonna do. Right. Try to do. yeah, Quinn jungle. If you guys, you know, think I'm super silly for mentioning that, it's actually ridiculous. Quinn and Doctor Mundo are your top tier jungle picks right now. Like. Just let that sink in for a little bit. It's actually ridiculous. So we might see that Quinn in the jungle, but with Zach being picked up, it, we're probably not going to. And with the Anivia pick, I would expect that to be more of like a top lane or maybe 80 carry. 80 Quinn. carry most likely, but was, we see Victor getting picked, uh, hovered over here. Um, forgot to mention Trinity World went with Janna, Lucian Comp, which is very strong in lane. Oh, okay, well we've got the last two picks gonna get locked in there for Team Philippines. And with a Victor picked up, and a Quinn, like, and the Anivia, like, where, okay, where now are the it's champions just, Now I'm just confused. <laughs> now I'm very confused. Anivia support? Stack support? I'm guessing that's Anivia support. support. So, Anivia support, if that is actually what Donata is going to be running here, I, I guess it's strong because it offers hard crowd control, a lot of, you know, maybe like long range, high damage, thanks to the doubling of Frostbite. But it but all depends on whether you hit the stun or not. Right. And that's not the best CC you want to go with when they're in spot lane, but I mean, I guess they have something in mind with these comps, so. Um, Irelia top coming in against Renekton. Okay, well and that- Renekton's running Ignite instead of Teleport. Yeah, and uh, top lane, we talked about with the nerfing of, ex of, uh, of Teleport, maybe a little bit uh, more worthwhile just win your lane, crush it super hard, because here in the preseason, games are actually running a lot shorter game time, so if you just snowball your lane out of control, that can be much more of a win condition now than it has been in previous patches. Previous patches. Yes. It looks like we are about to head into this game, so I don't know if you're as excited as I am, Justin, but I'm just going to make the assumption that you, that you are, and if you're not, I'm just going like, to shake you force those esports chills into you a little bit more as we get into our second game of the day. I don't know what you're talking about, man. When that Nivea was turned into support, when they switched it around, I was already very excited. What is so. happening? Uh, my esports, how does this work? I'm super excited. Uh, you can see Faceless, uh, you know, as he was loading in, actually rocking that just esports uh, tag. If you guys are big fans of the CIS region, Shout out to all the Just fans out there. But here we go, we're starting off with game number two as Russia takes on the Philippines in our second match of this seventh IESF World Championship preliminaries. So here we go, uh, starting off with opening gambits. What are we looking to see here from both of these teams? We've got a lot of wings here. We've got Anivia, we've got Quinn powering up there. I guess Zach pretends like he has wings when he flies into the ganks. I don't know if that's some synergy, but we've got a, a, a big avian focus there for the, the Philippines. The bird lane coming down VOD. Um, it's most likely they're <laughs> trying to go um, straight, uh, no lane swaps, just go straight lanes. I mean, there's, then, there's no point in picking an Anivia, so. Um, yes, yeah, standard lanes probably coming through. I've, I've heard of like fish lanes, but like Fizz and Nami, <laughs> nobody really runs that. But I've, I've also never heard of bird lanes either <laughs> laning together. Is this a new thing? Is this like a special, you know, This could be strat? a new thing. This could be a new thing. I mean, this is preseason, right? So you're supposed to try new things, maybe, uh, you know, have some surprises out there. It's like about maybe a few of the item starts here. We've got... Uh, Spell Thieves down in the bottom lane, pretty standard, at least considering those two supports. We've also got the renewable potions coming out in the jungle, even though uh, the junglers are starting with, you know, mana regen on the jungle item there for Zach, which, you know, may seem somewhat interesting given interesting. that he doesn't use mana. <laughs> but we've also got Ira guys just running with that standard Hunter's yeah. Machete. And here we go, we're starting out minions in the lanes, laners in the lanes as well. And we did see Renekton switch over to Teleport there at the last second, so now going to be running that super hardcore all-in Ignite versus Blorn. Yeah. 
Now it should be noted that Bloren in the top lane, Irelia definitely a big power pick for him. So uh, if you guys have been uh, either watching him either in his local leagues or previously playing for Mouse Force, you, you're probably going to remember that uh, champion. Now a nice shield there onto Dark who is playing AD carry, uh, switching it up as far as his role is concerned, not playing uh, support like you may have uh, seen him play before. And there's right there the um, Thunderlord's Decree already proccing there as Donat pushes in for a lot of extra damage. Um, top, top lane's trading really well. Um, the biggest thing I see coming into this game is how much impact this is least going to have pre-6 against the Zag, who has a um, little bit slower lane player speed, uh, jungle player oh, speed. Oh man, so. Florin already getting down dangerously low. Now that does it. Oh no, the range there on the knock-up, not enough to knock Donat all the way back up. I'm just going to call him Donut. Donut. I feel like that's just going to make both of us super hungry, but Donut, um, I don't know if there's like a donut related champion now. Donut related champion? I'm just trying to put as much food in here as possible. Double stuns there at the same time! Ah! Uh, that's that ignite! Or the lack of ignite, rather. That probably would have been able to pick up the kill if Renekton had stuck with that, but uh, not gonna go for that. Kid Guard sticking to uh, playing this a little bit more safely. Now, the lane did get pushed into Blorn's turret, so even though he's low HP, he will be able to sustain up a little bit by killing those underneath the turrets. And we haven't seen too much jungle interaction. But we're going to start things off by seeing terrorists walk into mid lane, unfortunately on a ward. It's very hard to gank Lulu in general just because of her movement speed, and then it's already awarded there, so it's already been telegraphed. And at least right there, taking out the Raptors. It should be, uh, you know, good information to see that Irrigat was scouted out there and still trying to find some some strats down here in the bottom lane. I'm guessing the all-in, if you do land that, oh man, oh. immediate equilibrium strike, stun forcing the flash from Blorn, narrowly surviving. One auto, one auto could have done it with even with, with the Doran's blade, but... Terra's waiting there, but I, I don't think he's waiting for a gank. Yeah, he's probably there for the counter gank, knowing that you know, Irelia, a little bit of a weak spot there. Lorne doesn't actually even fully heal from going back to base, just wants to make sure that he catches all of that experience as the wave pushes into his turret. Zach still waiting around mid? <laughs> I was going to say, Terrorist has kind of been uh, pitching a tent. He's going to earn his camping merit badge there by sitting near the mid lane. Um, I'm not sure really what to expect, uh, or what he's expecting to get out of that, but should be kind of interesting to, uh, to see if any of those ganks come to fruition. Bottom lane going in. Giza working out on that Thunderlord's Decree. A long range stun from Donat. Working those ice particles. And uh, it should be noted that Black Frost and Nivea is not an Nivea skin that you see used a lot. Because some of the particles are a little bit iffy as they uh, you know, fly out there. It can be a little bit hard to see. So maybe factoring in on a little bit of that advantage. Yeah, very even in terms of bot lane CS and one. Oh, one. coming through. Will this be a cocoon to land? No. That is an Ignite used there. Echo very low. The minions are going to kill Echo. Oh my gosh. The uh, the extra member mid and no way. Victor survives. In top lane though, we got another gank coming in here. Bloren in a 1v2. Almost picking up a kill there onto Kidgard, but he's got minions helping him out as well. Look at those minion waves. That's MVP performances from cannon minions, regular minions. Actually, I think there's no cannon minion there, but Lauren very, very low. But uh, with that theory stacking up there onto Kidgard, he should not be able to go back in on that. Yeah, a little bit to talk about the mid lane fight that just happened. I feel it was just mistelegraphed between the jungle and the mid mid laner after at least Eid right out of it. They thought probably going in to, for Victor at the same time, but was it at least got out to minions and really was just left to that dialogue. Wow. Um, so very, very close there in the mid lane, in the top lane. Surprisingly, not seeing any deaths up in the top lane just yet. I would have expected way more action up here. We've seen both junglers make their way up top lane. No avail there. And uh, the Dorian's blades start for Bloor, and he's really going to have to use his potion to uh, maximum effectiveness Thunderlord's procking care. But Yoza and Donat, that bird lay in the wings, Having trouble getting off the ground. Yeah, so Lucian's getting, Darker's getting a lot of slight CS lead over Quinn to try definitely winning this matchup. Lucian, Janna, very strong laners. Oh, I'm in a very difficult situation. He's got a lot of burst though. Gonna be throwing it out onto Eka. Not enough damage to pick up the kill. Lauren going in, he's looking for the kill. He's gonna get it. But now Hama, oh no, the bait is Eka coming in there. Whimsy though will be able to get it out safely. 
A little bit uh, over aggressive, but he's able to survive. Bloren, though, he's got to battle these minions. He's got that Heat 10 style to heal him back up, but oh, the blade surge. A little bit dangerous. So, Justin, what are we looking at for just maybe strengths from both these teams? We talked about the very heavy post six gank potential that Terrorist has, but. He's still working his way up there, only level 4 and at well, least in the Less lanes. than a gank potential. Post 6 is whether they probably group up and try to take objectives and whatnot. And he's very strong in team fights in general. Okay. Pre 6, he has a lot of gank roots that other junglers, other junglers might not have. But so far, I haven't seen it utilized very, very well. Right, he's been waiting around, specifically mid lane a lot, but it hasn't really paid off all that much. Now, Inugat's waiting for this lane to get pushed up so that then he can come in. But Terrorist has the exact same idea. A lot of focus on counter ganks here, but I haven't really seen it pay off just yet. Hamad still waiting there to see if he can have any either help from his own jungler, maybe needing that a little bit more than other lanes. Kid Guard, though, starting to maybe lose this. And it, it's, I, I've talked with a lot of uh, players about how this top lane matchup goes, and it's really fluid. So once uh, Irelia gets enough points in either Ten style for its ability to go in there with a the true damage, you can't really tank through that. Now we're starting to see Kid Guard. Oh, Bloor needs one more Transcendent Blade. No, where are those being thrown? What? Uh, maybe less transcendent than other blades to be thrown out there, but nice dodges, let's put it that way. Now going in for the steel terrorist can't get it. It's actually Lulu that secures that now. Oh, Cocoon gonna lock that Zack down. He's gonna be split into his little bloblets. But we've got Floor, or Kidgart rather, coming in from the backside. A lot of damage there from Gyoza. Inugat actually, or Irugat actually able to take down terrorist. That culling's not gonna hit onto a whole lot, but after all is said and done, really only Zack that dies there in that exchange. Yeah, nice for Renekton to use that TP advantage that he has over Irelia because of their, due to the early level trades. And, but then they, uh, was it the team? Did enough to secure the dragon, so I think it's a one for one trade right here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fair enough. And if you look at the gold count, really only a thousand gold separates these two teams. Not really all that much. The bottom lane, we've got to look on a faceless. A lot of burst damage coming down. There's the wall from Donat. Uh, very well placed, but unable to pick up the kill. Faceless did have to blow flags to survive. Yeah, we see a lot of these supports with, that are not usually used in the mid lane coming back, uh, used in bot lane coming back as support. So it's like Trundle has been used a lot. Oh, they're way. not walking very far forward. We'll get that Thunderlord's Decree to proc for some extra damage there. But oh, Bloren versus Kidgar. We've got Phage for Kidgar's Renekton, whereas Bloren has picked up a phase of his own and that extra attack speed. It should be pretty effective and uh, it's not looking too good for Kidgard. Now he's low health, so that does mean that he won't be able to get stunned here by this Equilibrium Strike, but gotta watch out for these top ganks as both junglers have shown a propensity to just you know, walking top lane, walking mid lane, walking back and forth. But, oh man, going back in. Is he gonna be able to pick up that kill this time? No. Transcendent Blades, he's saving that one for a little yeah, bit. If, later. if we see the itemization, they both, both Irelia and Renekton has Phage, and in this case, Irelia with Phage has a much higher power spike. Oh my gosh, that Quinn burst is ridiculous! He's picking up another kill. He's going for another one. Darker is running away successfully, so. To be able to get out of there. Flash immediately from Terrorist. Saw that Aurelia coming down. Bloren, too scary. Seems like a little bit of an early flash there, Justin. I'm not uh, sure. No, 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 with the cocoon. If the cocoon had without Zach's passive, he might have gone down really fast. So, I mean. Right. So, better safe than sorry there. Just making sure to uh, stay alive. Wants to be able to help out his lanes. He's been trying to make that happen here pretty consistently, but just hasn't been able to make it work. But. One thing that is starting to work is that bottom lane. Oh man, mid is where the action's at there. It's a move very low to burst damage. He's trying to put it out. He's going to take it. He's going to go down Terrorist. Very low does not have that Zack passive, but will pick up a couple of Bloblets to get himself that HP and bounce out alive. It's disappointing that he preemptively flashed up the top lane just so he has just enough HP to make other, things happen in other lanes, but just got chunked out there, couldn't do anything. Very nice game coming in from the jungler. Yeah, Ira got right there on time, and Bloren physically hasn't been able to pick up any kills, but he does still have that teleport, so he can make something happen in other lanes. Now, Glitter lands just barely. Man, Pix, got to hurry up there. Pix the Magic Dragon. Yeah, so right now, Lulu has contri complete control over this lane as a moment, just because of the pressure that Lee's been putting on. 
And Top Ail Lane's been doing well by himself, so... Now, is this dive potential there? Kidgar does have Dominus up, so got to be careful about that, but still very, very strong performance from Bloren up there. 22 CS ahead, he's still looking to go back in. Oh my gosh, so much first damage! We're going to see Dominus use just barely to stay alive, and Bloren... Did he actually use Transcendent Blazer? He did, so he's still... Wait, no, 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 he didn't. Okay. All right, so this is a lot of ways that he's going to miss out. Oh, but we see... Okay, Bloren just going to blazer in there for the insta-kill. Uh, I don't know about that, but mid lane we've got actually going on there too. I'm in a lot of trouble. Auto attacks from Eka. Going to take him out. Bloren's kind of on the run, though. I think he's got a team <laughs> to run back to, so I'm not sure where Terrorist is going, but... There's Giosa coming up from the bottom lane just to go ahead and clear that out. And that's some of that Quinn roam we were talking about. You actually mentioned, Justin, seeing Quinn more as a, maybe a mid laner so you can get that roam going on. Uh, yeah, um, Quinn has been utilized in mid lane just because of her movement speed with the ult, but... <laughs> <laughs> The two so there's the double here. wing lane. Actually looks like the same champion, but going back down to the bottom lane. A lot of procs there. That focus going off there. The culling coming out. It's going to hit on a Ginza. Sorry, Ginoza there. A lot yeah. of damage to be done, but the not enough. Culling damage got nerfed in this most recent patch, but scale is off AD and uh, received, uh, it becomes stronger as the game goes on, but the early culling damage doesn't do much. So... Back up top lane, Intergot's just standing there and Kidgar's just like, well, I'd love to defend the ward. Unfortunately, not going to happen. And man, talk about the power spike starting to come out. We're going to see an Essence Reaver rush there by Gyoza. And uh, on the other side, top lane for Bloren, he is like half an item away, plus the recipe cost there for that Trinity Force. There's going to be a big, big uh, stacking item to, or not stacking item, big power spike. Speaking of stacking items, Eka looking to uh, maybe build that into a... Uh, Sorry about that, I was fixing mm. a couple of things. All right, and we're back. Um, what was I talking about? We're looking to build that into a Medjai Soul Stealer, and we're back. So, having trouble seeing everything correctly, but I, I am seeing that it can sack into a Medjai eventually if he wants to go for that. But we got jungle on jungle action. Terra's versus Inner got follow up with the cocoon, perfectly placed. Will this Anivia support be enough to stay alive? Unfortunately not. We'll get egg. We got a lot of his no death passives, but it's not going to be enough to keep him alive. A double kill there. Yeah, the jungle support trying to get some vision in this dragon before it pops up, but at least just so much damage, and with, if that cocoon is, then you're insta dead. So, talk about the uh, the synergy between the passives there from Anivia and Zach. Both have those revive passives coming in there, but not enough to help either one of them. They both walk in, try to ward that dragon area, which, to be fair, it's a good thing to have warded, but oh, now we got Gyoza bottom lane there trying to make this happen. Is he going to be able to stay alive, survive, summon or heal? Almost enough to pick up a kill, but three man dives successful. There yeah, for Russia. I don't think he's going to be able to push this. Kidgar trying to get this push on, but I mean, the turret's above half HP. Now, to be fair, pushing down turrets is a lot more effective here in the preseason. Uh, the way the turrets were changed, they have uh, less resistances, more overall health. Turns out they actually die extremely quickly, specifically second tier turrets. Once we get uh, pushed on enough, might be able to see that illustrated. But man, down that bottom lane, we've seen a lot of action. But an Essence Reaver finally completed for Gyoza. Darker is working on one of his own, but it's just not quite in there yet. And keep in mind, we have a 6 0 1 Elise. She could push has kill potential in any of these champions right now. My goodness. And it, is, it should be noted that this AP Elise should be looking for a Rylai's Crystal Scepter coming out next. So this is an Elise that's legitimately going to be able to crush just about any, anyone he walks into. 20 CS up in the jungle. That's a little bit ridiculous. So expect to see Irrigat uh, on the forefront of these plays to be made here by Trinity World from Russia. Yeah, every lane other than the bot lane is winning in CS, so if they could snowball this into another big lead, you know, that might be game. Now starting to see some new support itemization there by Faceless, combining his support item in with a uh, Sightstone, so that he's got kind of the best of both worlds. He does lose that Frost Queen's claim active. I uh, saw some, uh, some challenger players from uh, EU West talking about maybe going for that uh, Frost Queen's claim on, on mid laners, but even forsaking it not only on mid, but now in the support role, just wanted to get that item slot efficiency. Yeah, top lane's there from really hard right now for Team Philippines, and so we see Zach here trying to help him out a little bit. 
if Aurelia does decide to go for the yeah. all-in. Well, Bourne could realistically 1v2 at this situation. He's gonna get ganked there. This is gonna be a very high-pressure situation. Goes in underneath the turret for the kill. Because he knows he's got backup coming in from Eru, who got a beautiful dive there by Bourne. Even in the face of a 1v2, he's still gonna be able to go in and gum out alive. And this makes it really hard for Team Philippines when that Renekton is not a split push pressure. Or in oh, no, the flash in. There's the ignite for the kill, Eka! knows that kill potentially is going to go in and grab the 10th kill of the game for Russia. Yeah, from this point on, I feel like the match is pretty one-sided. Not oh. a lot of objectives to take at the moment. And we were talking about how quickly these uh, second tier turrets die. He's going to see it right there. But going back into the bottom lane, there's the wall out. Faceless pretty dead and he's going to go down there. But will Gyoza be able to survive? There's the exhaust, the pressure, the damage in there onto Darker. A couple more auto attacks to take him down, but won't be able to come out. Mid lane turret in the meantime going down. And I, when you look at the stats though, these two dragons, three turrets taken down, Trinity World, uh, pretty ridiculous. I'm not sure if they named their team off of the Trinity Force and Lauren has been putting out so much work this game, but uh, it's been pretty incredible to watch them. That being said, this duo lane, the bird lane coming out from the Philippine team. Is there only, this Tim Philippines <laughs> only hope at this moment? We're, we see, we're seeing that first tier turn in the bot lane going down, so if they can snowball off of this. We'll see if they can. Quinn gonna go ahead and pop into Valor for him. We're asking for a little bit of extra help. But the so, thing yeah. is, that Quinn itself as a champion, I don't know about after the rework, but is it not a very good team fighter in general? So, well, I don't know once they start grouping off 5v5, five, I don't know how she's going to have much kill pressure. I, I, I mean, I don't know any AD carry in the game that's going to be too happy with a fed Elise and then a fed, you know, Trinity Force, Irelia in the top lane. Like, that's actually just ridiculous. So, as cool as it is for Quinn to be able to you know, rock all this bonus damage, fly around really quickly, it doesn't really matter when you've got a Trinity Force, Irelia, Blade Surging on your face. Uh, probably going to have a pretty bad time. Same thing with Elise, you get cocooned, you're probably pretty dead. Speaking of probably pretty dead, well, here's the Rift Herald. He's gonna shut that eye really quickly, but he's gonna go down almost as quickly. There is the uh, pseudo Baron buff given there to Lulu in the mid lane. So we're gonna look for some extra pushing pressure up the mid lane as uh, Trinity World looks to put some of their lane advantages into some ejected advantages pushing down that mid. They're trying to go for this mid lane tier two turret right now, trying to push it off a little bit with that scope, with that buff. Nice wave clear there by Hamoud, but this turret is taking the damage down to half HP. We're gonna go in there as Terrorist, but not gonna be able to uh, really get anything going there. Perfect wave clear there by this Lulu. Eka just so, so strong. You see, he knew he had that kill potential in the mid lane, instantly went for the kill, and he's able to play not only the 1v1 game, but also the team game, helping uh, you know shield Darker as he looks to push forward. And Yoza is flying around. Really cool, but uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna be working out there. Now, Bourne going in a little bit too far forward, but Terra's gonna be able to pop his revive passive. Bourne trying to flash away there. Will it be enough to keep him alive? Great protection there by Eka. This is staying that top lane presence. Ooh, and he actually gets a kill. And we do see the bot lane and top lane um, building up a little bit and towards Team Token's side. Um, they have a lot of things that they could go with this, but top lane and bottom lane was a minion pressure, so I, mean, I think they're trying to take a drag off of that. Yeah, but still a lot of questions to be answered here. We've got Hamoud, who's an entire item behind uh, his lane opponent there. Echo with that uh, Ludens Echo just completed. Not a whole lot to answer that from Hamoud, who's just trying to wave clear. He, to be fair, is up in CS, or he's, he's doing as best as he can in CS, but uh, unfortunately he's still down about uh, you know, 20, 30. It's going to be a little bit rough for his mid lane presence. Now, we were talking about bottom lane, even in CS, uh, pretty much there between uh, Darker and Gyoza, but it's going to be about the contribution here. Whoa, Bloren going the distance! Getting that Blade Surge on the end there. So much burst damage, they're not just can't even deal with it. It's going to pop down into egg form, but something tells me Bloren's probably got that. <laughs> 2v1 there right there. Straight up teleport into the minions and just kill it off right in there. So strong, this Irelia with Triforce. But not as strong as Irigod's kill potential. 
<laughs> okay, flashing there underneath the turret. What is that damage? Oh my goodness. Irogoth going in for his seventh kill of the game. Of course, Bloren right there to help him out by taking that turret. <laughs> Ridiculous damage from both of these very, very strong assassins. Yeah, and Kick Guard is actually not able to take top turret off of that, maybe with the minions, but he's just coming back into the bot lane to try to defend this in the bird turret. Gotta get some wave clear in here, but there's the culling there on the Donat. He is taking so much damage. Once again, oh gosh, Florn too far forward, or is he? Just kidding, so much healing coming back his way. At that Lulu protection. Echo low, Florn low, but none of them dead just yet. Now Gyoza might go down there, trying to turn it back around on the Darker, who goes down a nice Turn around for the Philippines. It's now Terrorist, pretty low as well. He's working his way out of that fight. Hamu coming in. Irogot with the slow there. Donat dashing in for kills. We got the blade searches everywhere. Lord finally going down to shut down there for Hamoud. Here comes Gilza. He's looking to make a turnaround kill there onto Eka. He's gonna flash the back, turn around with the Glitter Lance. Damage onto Faceless, but not enough to take him down. Yeah, a little bit greedy there from Trinity World, but we saw how much damage that, but they can put even in C situations right there. If oh Lucian did an E in over, Darker did an E in over there, that might have been a one team fight, but you know, maybe this is a lead, maybe this is an opening that Team Philippines need to win this game. Maybe. Now, one big thing to talk about most recently in this uh, important 2-3 patch uh, is that past 20 minutes, every member of both teams gets home guard boots, essentially. Or they get the home guard buff as they run out of base. So, especially for Quinn, that's actually an item that Quinn used to rush. Uh, champions like Hecarim used to rush home guards. So they're actually prevented from getting that buff super early on. But now that we're past 20 minutes, they are going to be able to get out of base incredibly quickly. Specifically for Quinn, since he's now hit level 11, uh, Gyoza is going to be able to use that rank 2 ultimate to run around the map incredibly fast. Yeah, another element that makes the game a little bit more fast. Oh just... my gosh, what is that damage? Eka just walks up and blows the hood out apart. Uh, maybe putting in some donut holes there. Big fan of those. Now, good guard uh, going to be in a little bit of trouble. He's running away. We got here, God, super fast, but... Uh, not fast enough to escape, uh, or Kidguard not super fast enough to escape. Irugat now with his eighth kill of the game. I think we all know who the carry is there. Incredible jungle performance there. And maybe possibly the reason we saw the Elise ban in our first preliminary match of the day. Now what I don't really get is how Lulu keeps being open throughout these big fan phases. I feel like it's one of the bans that, other than Mundo, that needs to be a must ban in these situations. I, but keeps getting through. I keeps feel if wrecking. there's any champion that can get 20 stacks on his Medjai's, you probably want to consider dropping those bands. Not quite 20, you got 18 stacks on that Medjai's Soul Stealer. 16, rather. Um, this is a build that actually was popular a couple of months ago, building um, Morello and then straight into Magi just because Lulu doesn't have a lot of damage pressure. But with this Magi, it gives a lot of AP, so bigger shield, faster whimsy. It's starting to go down there. Immediate destruction as Donut gets exploded. Look at Lauren. He's going in. He's got the double. He's looking for the triple. It's, uh, okay, no, it's actually a shutdown there for Darker. He's going in. There is the triple. Get the camera. Lauren making up a highlight reel with plays like that. Diving in. It's only Gyoza left alive. Can Quinn keep the Philippines in this game? Not looking likely as Russia pushes in. Trinity World looking to take down Baser. They've got one down. Even with Valor, Quinn <laughs> unable to keep these base turrets alive. The Nexus turret's down. The Nexus taking damage. And it does look like Russia's Trinity World will be coming out to an early victory in our second preliminary match, the IESF 7th World Championship. Incredibly well played there by the Philippines, but just a little bit more there by Russia. Exciting to watch these games, and it's going to be even more exciting to watch Trinity World as this tournament continues. But a big thanks to both of these teams and for everyone else out there watching the 7th IESF World Championship.